again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. So every now and then I get requests in the comments and in my inbox for some lessons on metal bass playing. And as anyone following my channel knows, even though I don't do many lessons on metal playing, that is how I got started. So it is something I ought to do more of. So today I'm going to look at a riff that drove me absolutely nuts when I tried learning it back in the early 90s. It's the opening riff from the tune Holy Wars, The Punishment Due by the one and only Megadeth. So, the riff we're going to look at sounds a little like this. The lesson material and drum tracks can be found over at TalkingBass.net, so just click on the link in the info below, and while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more lessons on every topic imaginable, all systemized for ease of navigation. Then, if you want to take your plane further, just check out any of the video courses that we have over at Talking Bass on loads of different topics like music theory, ear training, sight reading, slapping, and much, much more. So this riff is played by the brilliant bass player Dave Ellefson, and if you want to hear an awesome example of metal bass playing, just listen to the complete isolated track of this tune on YouTube. It's a tricky part to play and Dave plays it so well with such tight articulation and sound. Dave Ellefson is one of the most underrated bass players out there, and this song in particular is pretty much a masterclass in pick bass playing. So I'm going to be using a pick for this lesson just like Dave. You could try using your fingers, but even if you can get it up to speed, the tone can be all wrong for this, uh, for this tune based on the nature of the line. Dave does use things like palm muting in there to get that nice tight articulation, whereas with fingers, it can either get a bit drony or a bit clanky. So let's just work through the notes first of all. So we're in E minor pretty much, and we start with a hammer on from a D to an E there, fifth fret to the seventh fret of the A string. Okay. Then we've got three open E strings. Okay. Then we have a pull off from the G down to the E on the A string. So 10th fret down to the seventh fret. Okay, so that's. And then we just have eight open E's after that. So. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. For the second part of the line, we have the D to E hammer on again on the A string. Okay, fifth fret to seventh fret. Then we've got the three open E's. But then we have the D to E hammer on again. Then we have four open E's. And then we have this A sharp to B, sixth fret to the seventh fret of the E string. Okay, so if we put both of those lines together, okay, next we have pretty much two repeats of everything that we've just played, but each time we replace that A sharp to B there. So first time obviously we've got the A sharp to B, then the second time we have F to B. So that's 8th fret A string down to 7th fret E string. And then on the third time we play B down to G, so that's 2nd fret A string and then 3rd fret E string. Okay, so that three repeats would sound like this. Okay, and that's, that's the repeats. For the final repeat of that riff, it's pretty much the same, but then we have a different ending. So it sounds like this. Two, three, four. Okay, all the way back to the uh, start of the riff. So that riff sounds like this. We have the D to E hammer on, then the three open E's, then the G to the E pull off, and then instead of the eight open E's there, we've got six of them, so. Then we have a B there, seventh fret of the E string, then four open E's, 
then the A sharp there, sixth fret of the E string, and then two open E's, then A, fifth fret of the E string, coming back to the open E. So we're working just chromatically down there. B, B flat, A. So seventh fret, sixth fret, fifth fret of the E string with a few open E's in between. So. And then we land on this power chord. So this is a B and an F sharp. So we've got seventh fret E string and ninth fret A string. And then we hit that uh, staccato note on that chord again after a after a full bar. So one, two, three, four, one, and then we have this uh, quarter note triplet of B, G, F sharp. So you can play it seventh fret E string, third fret E string, second fret E string, or alternatively you could play that B power chord down here. So second fret and fourth fret of the uh, D string. So second fret A string, fourth fret D string, and then just come down B, G. F there, so 2nd fret A string, 3rd fret, 2nd fret E string. So either way, it doesn't really make much difference. Um, I'm using the E string for it all simply because I've seen how Dave plays it, and he generally plays it like that. So here's the whole riff. Two, three, four. So I'd say the key to learning this riff comes from focusing on the picking pattern, okay? So you want to break it down slowly and really concentrate on where the upstrokes and downstrokes are. So let's just work through the first part of the riff. So personally, I start on an upstroke for this. Um, I used to try playing it with a downstroke, but I find it, it actually comes a lot easier trying with an upstroke. So either way, you can you can try it starting on a downstroke or an upstroke. But if you're having any problems with, with the riff, try starting on an upstroke. It might help. So. I start with the upstroke, and then have the hammer-on from the D to the E, so just in case you've never played hammer-ons and pull-offs, for the hammer-on, obviously we're holding down the fifth fret of the A string there, and then I'm just hammering on, so, you know, no picking or anything, just hammering on with the third finger there, or the fourth finger at the seventh fret. Uh, and then when we come to the pull-off from the G to the E, Obviously, we hold the E down, so hold down the seventh fret uh, with the first finger, and then with the pinky, we fret the G, we pick it, and then we just pull off. So we kind of pop the finger off the string, and the hair presto, that finger's there for the E, okay? So, I start with the upstroke, and then for the three open E's, I'm starting on a downstroke. So, so that's the first part. Try it really slowly and just focus on which which stroke you're using. So, so when we when we finish the three open E's, then I'm going to use an, an upstroke again for the pull off. So for the G. So okay. So it's each time there when I'm on the A string, I'm using an upstroke. Then for those open E's, I'm starting on a downstroke and just playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So. That's the first part. Next, when we get to the two hammer-ons on the D, we're actually going to be playing with a downstroke, just because of the nature of how the picking has landed at that point. So, after one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which started with a downstroke, so down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, we're now ready for the downstroke on the A string. So the first time, we're starting with an upstroke, and then on the second time, we're on the downstroke. Okay, so, then it's the same thing, so. So. Then when we get to the A sharp to B, I'm on the upstroke, so. And then I just alternate, so. Upstroke, downstroke, so. Okay, so, like I said, concentrate on which 
which upstroke or downstroke you're using. So if you start on an upstroke, when you get back onto that D there, it's going to be a downstroke. Leaving you with the upstroke on the B sharp, sorry, the A sharp to B. We use exactly the same picking pattern for the next two repeats. So, upstroke, upstroke, then downstroke, then for the F to B, upstroke, downstroke. Then, again, upstroke. Upstroke again on the B to G. Okay, so the reason this happens, obviously, is because of the alternating action of the hand. When you're playing these kind of 16th note lines, chicka 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 chicka, you're not going to be repeating the same action, you know, the same stroke at that speed. You know, you're not going to go down, 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 you know, anything like that. Because it's this up down action, if we started on the downstroke for the chugga 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 chugga, when we get to those notes, it's going to be an upstroke or a downstroke, depending on where you land. But, you know, it's the picking, the alternate picking there that's deciding this for you. You know, you don't have to sit there and think, okay, well, I'm going to try and play this particular stroke here. You start on a particular stroke and then it's decreed from that point on, okay? So that's the first three repeats. So upstroke, downstroke, etc. Upstroke, upstroke, okay? For the final repeat, same again, we start with the upstroke. But then when we uh, catch the B there, we're playing it with a downstroke. Then upstroke for the uh, for the up and E's. Then for the A sharp, we're hitting an upstroke. So, and then we start with a downstroke for the two E's. And then obviously a downstroke for the uh, A, upstroke for the up and E. So it's just playing it slowly and just concentrating on what's happening with these uh, with these strokes because if you can nail it at a slower tempo it'll be fine when you start building up speed the problem is if you build up speed too quick and you haven't really worked that out and you're just letting your hands do whatever you know you're just leaving it to chance pretty much it might be fine you know if you've got good technique it probably will be fine but sometimes when you try this kind of thing you find yourself getting finger twisted or hand twisted you know with the picking and you think oh don't I'm you know I'm not getting those notes in there correctly and often it's just because you've not focused on those waypoints and knowing exactly which stroke you should be on it's exactly the same as when finger picking and knowing whether you're gonna be on the first finger or second finger or whether you're raking when we get to the power chord it's just a downstroke and from that point on, it doesn't really matter what you use because we're not playing fast. So, so the downstroke, and then you could play all downstrokes if you want. The only thing that you have to uh, be sure of is that when you hit the F sharp, you are hitting a downstroke because we're going to then be hitting the uh, upstroke again when we come back round. Okay, so anything goes pretty much as long as you're on a downstroke on the F sharp. As a little bit of a technical tip, I would advise you to actually angle the pick a little. So instead of playing backwards and forwards with the flat of the pick, if you angle it slightly in, uh, with your thumb a little and the finger there, I mean, as an extreme, you can, you know, if we were to put it completely side on, you'd get this kind of zipper sound. Um, you just want to angle it a little bit. So there's for two reasons. One of them is that you get a bit more of a metal tone out of it, a bit more crunch. And the other is that it actually makes the transitioning across the strings and all of this picking a little bit uh, easier, let's say. So um, also when you're um, coming backwards and forwards, when you're moving across strings, especially when you're coming back onto that uh, A string from the E string, be sure to really dig in on those actual notes. So when you come down, you know, really come down on it. You know, when you come back up, you know, really, well, not that much of a snap, but really, you know, put a little bit of conviction in there and you'll find that it's a little bit more, um, it's, it's better for keeping your bearings in the bar, okay? 
just because you're going at it and accenting a little bit more. When you accent beats in that way, it does help with uh, the notes preceding it. Now, that's hard to put into words, but it'll make more sense when you actually try the riff. So, as I'm working through, you can hear there, you can hear the tone in the pick. If I was to play it flat, you can hear that it's just a flat. When I angle the pick, you get that little crunch to it. One way of getting a little practice with this technique is to just try playing straight 16th notes, okay? So if I was to take the open E string there and just count one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, almost accenting on each beat, so. You could then build up speed. Try it on the A string, so I'm just playing the seventh fret of the uh, A string there, the E. And just build up speed. Okay. Now, if you listen to the isolated track of this on YouTube, you'll notice that Dave plays a lot of this line with palm muting. Now, that adds another challenge into the mix. To palm mute, you need to re uh, rest the heel of the hand on the strings there, round about at the bridge. Now, if you do that, you're gonna get this muted tone. So when we play the riff, Okay, as opposed to So that's how we get that crisp articulate kind of line, but it does take a little bit of doing to build up speed on that so Because you're restricted a little bit more with the hand so I would definitely Advise you to start without palm muting, you know get this riff down You know work it up to the full speed without any of the uh, palm muting and then you can try adding it in there. So, as I mentioned, start out slowly with this riff. Don't worry about playing along to backing tracks or, you know, the original or a click track, anything like that. Just get it under your fingers first, you know, so you can play consistently correctly at a slow tempo. Then you can try with the backing tracks. Now, I've supplied five different tracks. First one starts at 130 and then it builds up to 166, which is roughly around the speed of the original. So, let's hear it at 130. Now let's try a little quicker at 140. Now let's get a bit quicker, let's try 150. So, we're getting a bit nearer, now let's try 160. Etc. Okay, now let's try full speed 166. Obviously, this is just one of a whole bunch of different riffs in Holy Wars. It's a pretty long tune and there's lots of different uh, things going on in there. So this is one of the opening riffs. Um, but once you've nailed the principles in that riff, it should help with learning the rest of it because, you know, a lot of the riffs are variations on this kind of picking pattern. There, there are exceptions. But um, 
you know, if you can get this off, then you can try working on the rest of the tune. Okay, so that's Holy Wars. <laughs> now, obviously, that's a bit of a pick fest, and, you know, that's not going to sit very well with a lot of the fingerstyle players out there. So I'll be working through some of the other metal tunes very soon. Just let me know in the comments which metal tunes or bass players you'd like to see covered. So remember to like this video if it's helped, subscribe to the uh, channel, and hit that little bell symbol to be notified of new lessons. Also remember to check out TalkingBass.net for hundreds more lessons on every topic, and if you want to take your bass playing to the next level, then check out the video courses over there where we've got a host of different courses on music theory, ear training, sight reading, slapping, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so I'll see you next week.